everybody and welcome, I am Bricker Boom, and today we're going to see if we can beat the game Pokemon Fire Red with a Slowking. Slowking was a branched evolution from the Slowpoke line and was heavily featured in the second Pokemon movie as a walking, talking genius, I think. All I really remember is that he wants pants. It's got a decent HP stat, good special on both fronts, and honestly, the only thing truly lacking is its speed. But I mean, the name begins with slow, what do you expect? From a move's perspective, it is an absolute menace. It can learn Psychic, Ice Beam, Surf. Honestly, you can't ask for a better Pokemon to be able to use when it comes to move sets. In Gen 1 especially, any Pokemon that can learn Water and Ice type moves and Psychic Pokemon just in general usually end up doing incredibly well in this particular Gen. I write bits and pieces of the script as I go along, so I'm not even 100% sure what will happen when I start writing this. However, given the fact that Slowpoke was able to beat the game, I already know Slowking will. I just don't know what level, how much time it'll take, etc. I will try to remember uh, to put what level Slowpoke beat the game. This way you can at least compare that to Slowking, and then naturally, when I do a Slope Bro run, I'll be sure to go ahead and do the same. Now, for this run, I was making a few different challenge runs at the same time and didn't even realize till the ship that I gave the rival the wrong starter. So the rival has Charmander, but at the end of the game, he'll have a Gyarados and an Executor, which could both prove to be a lot of trouble. So you're just gonna have to deal with it and hopefully forgive me this time. We have a gentle nature, increasing special defense and lowering the physical defense. This won't be too much of an issue overall, honestly. As long as we're able to survive the hits that will be dished out to us, we should be fine. For the lab rival battle, we have access to Curse, Yawn, and Tackle. We can do about a quarter of its health, and it's doing about a sixth of ours, uh, assuming no crit, and then it gets a crit. But so do we, so it evens itself out, and we win and move on. For those that don't know, Curse is a little bit of a weird move. Uh, curse lowers our pitiful speed even further, but raises our attack and defense. It's something that we can definitely use and may be useful as the game progresses, especially if we come against something that's specially bulky and can't take it down. And given the fact that our speed is already low enough to begin with, it's not like we're going to be punished for using something that's going to lower it further. But we go ahead and go through the beginning of the game and of course go to the optional rival fight with pidgey it opens with sand attack and we do okay enough damage with tackle we yawn to put it to sleep and then basically start setting up curses given our decent hp pool and buffed up stats we're able to take down the pidgey and then not too long after we're also able to take down the charmander allowing us to move on as we go through the forest we come to our first roadblock of the game which is brock Brock being a rock type trainer makes us for a rather tricky battle. We do try to do the whole setup thing while putting the Geodude to sleep, but even after six boosts, we're just not able to get past this. We can usually take down the Geodude, but the Onyx just comes out and finishes us off. So what we do is we go back to the forest and do a quick grinding session up to level 13, where we learn Water Gun. After that, Brock starts as always with Geodude and Water Gun takes it out with a critical hit. And then next up is Onyx, and Onyx goes down to one shot as well, winning us a fairly simple battle after we got the move that we needed. As we move through the route to the right, it's actually pretty easy to get through, given the fact that both our level and move set is tricking up there. We grab the Dome Fossil, because that's easily the best one, and then we make our way into Cerulean. Given the fact that Misty does resist both of our moves, uh, we do make sure to grab Mega Punch. It's inaccurate but it's powerful, and it's also a normal type move. It's not as powerful as Machamp learning it, but at least it's a move that Misty can't directly resist. Also, how's the audio on this, and how have they been in the past couple weeks where my computer kind of, you know, died? I've had to reset everything, and while editing, I feel like it doesn't sound the same, but I also don't think it sounds like I'm recording into a potato, but I'm also the one that typically hears it, deals with it, and I know how my voice typically sounds, so it's a little bit harder for me to be able to gauge. I haven't heard any complaints, but y'all could just be super nice. I don't know. Let's go ahead and fight Misty. 
Misty starts with Staryu, and we take it to about half with Mega Punch as it uses Harden. After that, we just focus on setting up some curses while Staryu uses Water Pulse. Since it's only doing 5 HP of damage, and we have own tempo, we can't be confused, so honestly, this is a safe setup. After that, it's just taking a few Water Pulses that Starmie throws at us, we throw a few punches, and then the battle is won. That was a bit easier than what I thought it was going to be, especially given the fact that Mega Punch is typically pretty inaccurate. But honestly, the fact that we're able to set up and sweep, I, I just, I love being able to do it. So now we have two badges down. Let's see how we do with the rival fight. The rival starts with Pidgeotto, and we get hit with Quick Attack as we use Confusion, taking it down with a critical hit. Rattata's next and uses Tail Whip, and we use Confusion, taking it down in one shot. Charmander uses Scratch, and we swap to Water Pulse, taking it down, and then Abra is last, and we use Water Pulse, taking it down in one shot, and that wins us the battle. After that, it's a jaunt through the route to the north, and then the ship as well, before we go to the next rival fight. During this time, it's now I'd like you to say, if you haven't yet, think about subscribing to the channel. We're trying to get those watch hours up, and also, you liking the content, lets me know that you enjoy this. I hope... I have a couple days to work on content coming up here next week, but any time that I seem to have more than one day off, something happens. First vacation, I was sick the second day and forward till the very end. Second vacation, my computer died. I have a few ideas for winter time, including a frost last run in the winter. Now, I want to say if you do have ideas for runs me to do in the future, let me know in the comments below. I'm going to go ahead and put up a sticky note here of the runs that have been suggested to me recently. Uh, again, where my computer died, all my notes that I had kind of, you know, went with it. But this is what I have. If there's anything you want to see, let me know. I'll add it to the list. Anyway, let's go to the rival fight and see how we do this time around. Pidgeotto is first, and we open with Confusion, taking it to yellow as Sand Attack connects to make for an annoying battle. Quick Attack connects, and we take it down. Raticate is next, outspeeds, and uses Tail Whip as we use Confusion, taking it to red as Hyper Fang connects for solid damage, and we take it down. Cadaver uses Disable, which is fine, because we swapped over to Mega Punch and KO it. Then Charmeleon is out, it uses Metal Claw, and then we can take it out to win the battle. After that, we can give the captain a back rub and go on to Surge. Out of all the trainers, gym leaders, whatever, I feel like this will likely be the hardest person for us to face. We're slow, he's speedy, pretty easy to do the math. Worst case scenario, if we can't beat it now, there are plenty of trainers on the way to the Dark Cave, and absolute worst case scenario, we can make our way through the Dark Cave, fight plenty of trainers. I doubt we'll be out speeding anytime soon. But let's go ahead and see how we do with our first attempt. Voltorb is first, and Sonic Boom connects, and we take it down with one Confusion. Next out is Pikachu, and we use Confusion, taking it out in one shot, and I'm honestly surprised that we outspeed. Last up is Raichu, and it begins with Double Team, and we use Confusion, taking it to not quite half. Raichu comes out with Shockwave, and we can take it out for a pretty simple first try victory. Slowking is a little bit tankier than I thought. Now, we have the Dark Cave ahead, and I think we have a pretty good shot at the remainder of the game. With Erica, she may have the type advantage, but I don't know if they'll actually be able to outspeed her one shot. Then with Koga, we can likely tank and one shot most of his team. And then Sabrina, she's speedy as all get out, and we may not be one shotting, but I still don't think she'll be difficult. But rather than trying to go to the Crime Lord, we go to the gym and see how we do with our first attempt. Before we do that though, since we do have access to Celadon, Saffron, and Lavender Town, we get a move upgrade. Granted, we can learn Psychic through level up, but I'd rather have that powerful move now. So with that, we grab Psychic. Erica starts with Victory Bell and we open up with Psychic, taking it out in one go. Vile Plume is surprisingly next, and we do outspeed it, taking it out in one shot. Then last up is Tangela, and we continue with our Onslaught, taking it down in one shot to win the badge. I'm, I'm racking my brain here, and I legitimately cannot think of the last time that she sent out Vileplume before Tangela. The result was going to be the same, but I just can't remember it. After that, we can go ahead and go to the Giovanni fight for the first time. Honestly, he may be one of the people that as we get into the later battles, he'll probably get easier as time goes on. He abandons his Kangaskhan, and even though they are ground type, they're also part poison type. 
which means that either move that we use, whether it be water or psychic based, are going to do super effective damage. So I feel pretty good about it. Let's go ahead and see how it goes for the first time with Giovanni. Giovanni starts with Onyx, and we open up with Water Pulse, taking it out of one shot. Next up is Kangaskhan, and we get hit with a decent hitting critical hit fake out. It follows up with a Tail Whip, and Psychic takes it below half. Mega Punch hits hard, and then we can take it out. Next up is Rhyhorn, and we use Water Pulse, taking it down. Alright, that is one more battle done, and we have another rival battle to go to afterwards. We head back to the tower and challenge the rival, and honestly, this is one of the easier battles, and at this level? The rival first starts with Pidgeotto, and we open up with Psychic, taking it down immediately. Next up is Gyarados, and we're almost double its level, so it goes down. The eggs are next, and we do have to use Headbutt, taking it to half as Hypnosis misses, and we take it to a sliver. Hypnosis does connect, and we spend a few turns asleep, but it honestly can't do much, then we take it down. Kadabra misses its disable, so we take it down with one shot. And then finally, it's Charmeleon, who goes down to Water Pulse, winning us a simple battle. After that, we have a decent bit of travel ahead, and of course, some Safari Zone Scramble. So far, Slowking is absolutely dominating the early game as an absolute menace. And I have a feeling that he'll probably end up dominating the late game as well. Psychic, as I've said before, especially in this gen, is overpowered and he's a third stage evolution. I am curious how Pokemon like him that relied so heavily on psychic moves would do in Gen 3. Dark types are everywhere because it was still a fairly new type and the evil bad guys of course had to use a dark Pokemon because that's apparently evil. And while Grumpig did well, it also had a pretty decent physical attack to back it up. I need to mess around with Gen 3 a little bit more. Oh, also, we catch a full odds chancy at the Safari Zone, just throwing a ball. So that's neat. Anyway, let's go fight Koga. Koga starts with Coughing, and we open up with Psychic, taking it out of one go. Next up is Muck, and we use Psychic, taking it to what I have to imagine is 1 HP. Sludge does some decent damage, and Koga heals up as we take it back to a sliver. Knowing that Koga will heal, we swap to Water Pulse to do a little bit of damage, then swap to Psychic to finish it off. His next coughing is out, and we use Psychic again, taking it down. Finally, it's Weezing, and we can take it down in one shot as well. After that, it's a heal up, and we can head to Saffron City. And it's time to clear out the tower, and of course, fight the rival. Now the good news is, inside Silphco, if needed, we have plenty of options. There are a few vitamins inside, some trainers, and I recently learned from the comments from my Machamp video, Bulk Up. If you didn't know, 7th floor, right corner, bulk up TM is available. Not that it'll do too well with our current Slow King, but definitely something I'll be using in the future. But we go ahead and go see the rival and see how things go. Pidgeot is first and it uses Feather Dance, which honestly best case scenario, and we use Ice Beam, taking it down in one go. Gyarados is out and only uses Dragon Rage as we use Ice Beam, freezing it with Ice Beam. It does defrost immediately and attack again as we take it out with Psychic. The scrambled eggs are out and they go down to an Ice Beam. And then with Alakazam it sets up Future Sight as we use Water Pulse taking it to just below half. Confusing it, it smacks itself and we can take it down. Charizard is out and Wing Attack doesn't do much as we take it to red. Unfortunately, we get hit with Future Sight and then that allows Flamethrower to be able to do enough damage to take us down. This does take a few times, but we have an attempt where Gyarados, for whatever reason, just keeps using Leer, and we also manage to confuse the Charizard, so it just smacks itself around a little bit before going down. The luck needed for this wasn't too bad, but there was definitely a little bit at play. I'm glad we were able to beat it though at a lower level than I would have initially thought, especially after the third or fourth attempt. But now, on to Giovanni. Nidorino is up first, and we use Psychic to take it out of one shot. Nidoqueen is next, and we continue with Psychic, taking it to what I have to imagine is a sliver of HP. Double Kick doesn't do much, and then we can take it out. Kangaskhan goes to not quite half, and he uses Rage, which is honestly just a horrible move, and we take it down with a critical hit Psychic next turn. Next out is Rhyhorn, and a Water Pulse takes it out in a single shot. Alright, let's go to Sabrina and see how things go. Attacking her specially... 
normally isn't the best idea, but it's also about the only option that we have. Cadaver is up first and only sets a future site, and we use Water Pulse, taking it to red. Cadaver gets healed up and we take it back to red, then we can take it out. Venomoth is out and we take a bit of damage from future sight, and we take it down below half with Ice Beam. Leech Life doesn't do too much, and then we can take it out. Mr. Mime comes out and begins setting up Calm Mind as we use Water Pulse, taking it to knock white half. Psybeam honestly doesn't do much, and we take it to red, confuse it, and Sabrina heals up. We do about a quarter damage, Sabrina heals the confusion, and then we can take it back to red before knocking it out. Last up is the scary Alakazam, and we get hit with the Psychic as we use Water Pulse, taking it to half. Psychic takes us down to 15 HP with a crit, but we knock it out with a critical hit of our own. Six badges down, and we do need to go ahead and replace Water Pulse with Surf. While I don't think Blaine will necessarily be an issue, it's nice to know that we'll do some additional damage and not have to rely on luck from the Confusion, because first off, the Confusion has to connect, and then they have to smack themselves. Blaine first sends out Growlithe, and we open up with Surf and take it out of one shot. Then he sends out the big Woofer Arcanine, who uses Takedown for pretty solid damage, and we take it down. I don't know if the recoil damage left it in a damage range, I'm not 100% sure. Ponyta's out, and we one-shot it, and then last up is Rapidash, and he uses Bounce for decent damage and paralyzes us. But thankfully, we don't get paralyzed and take it down with one Surf to win a simple battle. Alright, we have one more gym battle to go, and I think it's going to be just as easy as the last one, if I'm being completely honest. Giovanni sends out Rhyhorn, and we open up with Surf, taking it down. Next out is Dugtrio, and it absolutely outspeeds us and hits us with Earthquake, but then we take it down with Surf. Nido Queen is next, and you guessed it, goes down to a single shot. And then Nido King does outspeed, Earthquakes us, and we take it down with one shot. Last is Rhyhorn, who's also a one shot, and that's that. Now, we have one more rival fight before the Elite Four, so let's go ahead and see how it goes. Pidgeot opens with Wing Attack, which is honestly, for us, better than Sand Attack, and we can take it to what I'm sure is 1 HP. Another Wing Attack connects, and then we can take it out. The Eggs are next, so we continue with Ice Beam, taking it down in one go. Rhyhorn is next, so we can take it down with a single Surf. Gyarados is next, and it uses Rain Dance as we freeze it with Ice Beam, and then we use the Rain Boost to do more damage with Surf, taking it out in a couple turns. Charizard comes out and the rain is falling, and honestly, that's best case scenario because then the fire attacks are going to do even less if he opts for that. Wing attack does solid damage, but we can take it down with the boosted attack power. Last up is Alakazam, and we continue with Surf since we have the boosts as it sets up Calm Mind, and we take it to almost red. Disable misses, and we can take it out to win the battle. As we go into the Elite Four, I'll be honest, I think we'll be okay for the most part. Lorelei will probably be a bit of a wall for us, given the fact that we have no way to deal super effective damage. Bruno will be able to attack super effective damage his whole team. And same with Agatha. Lance could be an issue if enough of his Pokemon outspeed ours. The good news is with Ice Beam, we could probably one-shot most of his team. Then, with the final rival, if I had to guess, Alakazam will probably be the biggest issue. For the same reason that Lorelei is a big issue, because we don't really have a super effective option. I should have probably checked for Shadow Ball now that I'm recording this and in hindsight, but it's fine. Lorelei first sends out Dugong, and we open with Psychic as it sets up Safeguard. Psychic doesn't do quite half, and we get hit with a pretty weak Surf. We take it down to red, and then Lorelei heals up. Dugong sets up Hail, and we swap to Surf to do the last little bit of damage, and then take it down. After that, Lapras is out, and Body Slam does a decent chunk of damage and paralyzes us. We do lower its special with our first attack, but between Hail and the massive damage it can do, we get taken down pretty easily. All the way at level 70, we mostly just have to focus on Psychic. Even on a good attempt, we're mostly just spamming that move, and with our gained levels, we're still getting a lot of damage dealt to us. We can now finally take out the Lapras and the Slowbro, but the Slowbro takes forever due to Amnesia, but it does go down. When Jinx comes out, it puts us to sleep and whittles us all the way down to 19 HP before we can knock it out and barely win the battle. Bruno time. 
Onyx goes down to Surf, the Hitmonchan goes down to Psychic, Hitmonlee misses its Mega Kick, so it goes down to Psychic, the next Onyx is down with the Surf, and then after that Machamp is out, and it also goes down to a critical hit that I don't think mattered, because Psychic is usually able to handle his team pretty handily. Now it's time for Agatha, and as Gengar begins double teaming, we just use Psychic to take it down. After that, Golbat is out, we swap over to Ice Beam. Air Cutter does a bit of damage, and then we can take it down in one shot. Arbok is next, and misses Screech as we use Psychic, taking it down. Gengar is out, and misses its Hypnosis, letting us take it out. And then finally, it's down to Haunter, who we can outspeed, and take out. After a pretty rough Lorelei battle, it was nice having back-to-back -back somewhat easy ones. But do you think Lance will be just as easy? You, you can probably tell because of how little time is left on the video, but it, it, it's fine. Lance starts off with Gyarados, and we open up with Psychic as Dragon Rage does a good bit of damage, but we one-shot it with a crit. Dragonair is next, and it goes down to a single Ice Beam, and the second Dragonair is the same. Dragonite is out and uses Safeguard, and we use Ice Beam, taking it out as well. Last but not least is Aerodactyl, and we use Ice Beam. Ancient Power does hit for solid damage, but since it doesn't get an Omni Boost, thank Arceus, we're able to take it down in one go. One more battle. With the rival, he opens with Sand Attack on his Pidgeot, and we use Ice Beam to take it down. Gyarados is next and does a good chunk of damage as we whittle away at it. As it gets confused, the rival heals up. We can take it to about half, and then Thrash knocks us out. Admittedly, this does take about a dozen attempts, but we finally get an attempt where our Quick Claw activates, so we actually end up moving first to take out the Pidgeot. Gyarados is up next, and a couple Psychics take it out. Executor is next, and Ice Beam takes it out. Alakazam honestly doesn't do much with Psychic, and we take it to red with Surf. The Rival heals up for what feels like a thousand times before it goes down. Rhyhorn is obviously a one-shot, and Charizard takes us to 49 HP, but we can one-shot it as well. All right. I really enjoyed that run, and I hope that you did too. I had a lot of fun with it, and it was good getting to use the Slow King. Since it's primarily Gen 2, I don't think I've ever actually got to use one on my team. Next week is Thanksgiving, and after I get this edited, I'll start script writing the Doduo run. Fun fact, uh, because I started the Doduo script today, well, before recording this, I've already started on the Doduo run, so for once I might actually be ahead. I hope that you all have a safe holiday if you don't watch next week, and as always, if you like the video, oh man, and as always, if you like the video, even if you didn't like the video, hit the like and subscribe button, because it really does help me out, and until next time everybody, peace out!